Hi, John. Hey there, how's it going? Oh, very well, how are you? I'm doing great. Great, thank you for joining us. So John, why don't you just, uh, let's start by just giving us a quick breakdown of your, of your job, your responsibilities at, Pent at uh, Rico. I will keep on calling um, it Pentax, sorry, uh, that's just habit. <laughs> yeah, I'm the senior, senior marketing manager, um, my role is kind of mixed. I, uh, I work with our, on our product side, um, just kind of with an in-depth knowledge of the product itself. Uh, but I also work with our, our retail account managers to make sure our Pentax and Rico retailers have everything they need to to help promote our product. Great. So from your point of view, just, I mean, this is a perennial confusion, uh, not only with me, but also our readers. Just break down the difference in your, in your mind between Rico and Pentax at this point, if someone sees it written well, in front of cameras. Uh, Rico is our is our parent company, um, so technically I do work for Rico um, and the Rico Imaging Division. And how it breaks down for the product is we have our core product lineup um, that kind of are are made for our core enthusiasts, and those products have the Pentax branding on them because Pentax, you know, the brand's not going away, the engineering's not going to go away, the mounts are not going to go away. Um, still a very important part of, of who we are and what we do. Um, the other, you know, the lenses will maintain the, the Pentax brand. We have a whole line of sport optics, so binoculars and spotting scopes that will maintain that Pentax brand. Um, where Rico comes in is um, the more, I don't want to say innovative, but um, products that appeal not necessarily to the core, so our compact cameras, cameras like the GR, our waterproof camera, the WG4, the new WGM1, the, the um, ruggedized movie camera, um, all the way to cameras like our, our Theta, the spherical capture device. Yeah, I've been playing so that's kind of how it breaks down the, the traditional customers with uh, the Pentax products and the, the not so traditional um, it, with the Ricoh branding. I've been playing a lot with the Theta recently, it's a lot of fun. It's yeah, the, it's a cool it's, little camera. It's the number one camera I wanted to, uh, to make a new version of as quickly as possible. Gotcha. <laughs> so um, why don't you just quickly talk us through your interchangeable lens camera lineup and the strategy for that lineup? Uh, really, where we wanted to put our focus is, is three mounts, basically. The Q mount and the associated cameras with that, the K mount and the 645 mount. Um, so starting on the Q mount, you know, really the, the strategy with the Q system and the Q cameras and lenses is to provide a, a great quality imaging device um, in a very compact, stylish looking camera. Um, you know, it's, it's not necessarily designed to compete against a traditional DSLR or, or anything like that, but it definitely gives you much better image quality and, and imaging and control um, more so than obviously a smartphone, but um, even more importantly, a lot of the digital compact cameras out there without interchangeable lenses. So when you have the lenses that are dedicated to that mount, um, you can really fine tune the sensor and, and lens to give you great, great quality images. So who is buying the, the core kind of, Sorry, of our lineup is the K mount. Um, you know, the, the mount we've had almost 30 years now, um, and we want to maintain that and continue to grow that. Um, with the cameras available. So with the cameras we have, we have the K50 as kind of the, the entry-level model, the KS1 uh, uh, as a mid-level camera with great great features, but also very very stylish, and then the K3 um, as our advanced APS-C size camera. And really the goal in each of those is within you know each of those categories to offer the best product possible whether it's the AA filter simulator on the, the KS1 and the K3, the frame rate, the, the shake reduction system, any of those things. Um, but also with those DSLRs, we want to have that backward compatibility so that customers that have a 30-year-old K-mount lens, um, they can mount it on one of the newest camera bodies and still get great images. And then we have the 645 uh, mount to go with our 645D and the, the newest 645Z which is our professional level camera. Um, that's it's very attractive because it it has the resolution and the sensor and the features and the functions um, of a true professional level camera, but it's significantly less expensive th than other cameras in that category. Mm -hmm. So really, a pretty complete lineup from from the you know in 
enthusiast entry level uh, with the Q all the way up to professional with the 645. Thanks, guys. So, John, you, you talk about having a pretty complete lineup, and I, I would agree, everything from the Q up to medium format. But the obvious gap there is in full frame. I mean, do you think there is an opportunity? The K-mount clearly is a full frame mount. It comes from, it comes from film, it comes from the film era. Do you think there is an opportunity there for Pentax, Rico? I, I, I think so. I mean, obviously, I can't share any future product plans or anything, but it's something that, you know, our, our, our um, engineers and product planning team have, have been looking at. Um, I think it's a matter of, you know, one, is it is it's an area where we the volume is there to support the business. Uh, so there's a business decision, but there's also, I think, um, and you see this in our other cameras, we want to make sure we, we do it right. You know, when we introduced the 645D, we showed a mock-up of that camera for about four years before we finally said, yes, now the technology is right, everything is right, and we'll introduce the product. Um, and then obviously make the great um, step forward with the 645Z. Um, but I think you, know, you go back to that business decision where with the 645Z, we, we saw a very obvious, um, not a hole in the market, but somewhere where we could, where we could really um, make an impactful introduction to the market. Um, so we want to be able to, 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 to do that if we go that route, not saying that we will. Um, but but it's it's something that, that the product planning team is studying. So I think that was all but confirmed from a leak at Photokina on, on uh, I think, French social media, uh, that, that Pentax was yeah. certainly looking at it anyway. Right. So can you just yeah. talk us, um, I mean, just quickly on the 645Z, um, I, know, I know it's been a very popular product. I mean, just quickly talk us through, like, what were you trying to do with that camera? Uh, well, obviously, it's a professional level camera, so we wanted the features to support that, um, starting off with the sensor. So, you know, the, the new 50 megapixel uh, medium format sensor, we wanted to incorporate that in the camera, but also maximize it. So things like frame rate, um, video capabilities, weather sealing on the body, um, you know, all the, all the features and functions that make it great, um, that really make it a class leading camera but also offering it at a price, you know, $8,500. Um, you know, we, we knew we could make an impact and we knew that we could um, put something out there that is truly a professional level camera, but is still approachable for enthusiasts, for a high-end enthusiast um, to make that step from APS-C or full frame to medium format is a, is a huge step. Uh, and how's, uh, who, who's buying it right now? I mean, what's your customer base for the 645Z? It's really quite interesting because we, um, it's selling very, very well. Uh, first of all, <laughs> we were pleasantly surprised by how well it's been accepted by the market. Um, but it's it's really kind of going toward um, kind of a mix of fashion photographers, um, definitely some wedding photographers mixed in there, and then obviously you know, the 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 core. Um, customer for it has always been uh, the outdoor, outdoor landscape photographer. So um, definitely selling well in, in each of those individual markets. So let's return quickly to your APS-C lineup, to your K-mount lineup. Um, one of the, I know from, from our interactions with the readers, one of the frustrations with Rico Pentax has been the lack of new lenses for that lineup. I mean, how are you addressing that, that need and where do you think the biggest gaps are in your lens lineup? Um, you know, it's it, it's kind of interesting where we have always heard, you know, a, there needs to be a Pentax 24 to 70 or a 70 to 200. And I think that's partially that kind of connection to, to 35 millimeter um, and those given focal lengths. Um, but if you look at what, you know, the angle of view is on a 70 to 200 or a 24 to 70, versus on an APS-C, we have those lenses. We have a 16 to 50, we have a 50 to 135 that give you that field of view. Granted, you have some depth of field differences, uh, but we kind of have that covered. And we have everything on the wide angle covered for the most part, not to say that there are areas where we can have new lenses with uh, faster lenses, um, but the, at the other end of the spectrum, um, longer focal length lenses, um, there's, there's been some demand there, um, and it's some, certainly somewhere where we're looking. 
Um, um, but you know, if if you really look at the complete lineup, we have zoom lenses and fixed focal length lenses from you know 14 millimeters or the 10 to 17 zoom all the way up to to 300 millimeters. So it's pretty pretty wide selection. And keeping with the K mount just for a minute, if you could do one thing to keep your K mount users happy right now, what would it be? Um, that's a tough one uh, because uh, we're, we're doing so much with the K3 and there's so much in that in that uh, camera. Um, we're doing great things on the, the entry level and the mid level. Um, so I guess maybe it would be something above the K3. Um, what's the next step above that? Or how do we how do we improve on on that camera? Um, because, you know, again, you look at the lineup and and both price from a price perspective, but also a feature perspective, we're, we're extremely competitive, if not um, offering things that, that you don't see in other cameras. So what are they asking you for? Um, you know, you mentioned before full frame. Um, so there is that demand from the, the internal customers. Um, um, and then, you know, some of those lenses, like, it, like I said, I mentioned the 70 to 200, that, that request has been out there from customers for, for years. Um, so it's, you know, obviously something that, that we consider and we're looking at. Um, it's just got to make sense. Um, it's got to, you know, it's either, it's got to complement the lineup of lenses or, you know, something has to go away to make room for it. You know, one of those two things has to happen. So it's something we're constantly looking at. Let's return just quickly to end and we'll talk about the Q a little bit. And the Q, the Q came out almost as a, I mean, forgive me, but almost as a novelty a few years ago. It sort of came a little bit out of the blue and it was fun and, and very interesting. The Q has now been around through several iterations. There's quite a few lenses now for the Q. It's been out for a few years. What mm -hmm. have you learned through the process of, uh, of putting that, that series of products to market? It, it's really how it's positioned. Um, I think we... Um, Maybe not mistakenly, but uh, you, we were a little aggressive saying, you know, this is a camera that will give you everything a DSLR gives you. Mm -hmm. um, after several iterations of the camera, it's like, eh, yes and no. Yes, it gives you some of those manual controls and manual features, but it's still a smaller sensor. So it's it's really how, how you know, how we determine who the camera's for. Um, yes, it takes great quality images. Um, but it's a very compact body and it does have a smaller sensor. So it's, um, you know, we've kind of you know, tweaked the design, the different color offerings, that kind of thing to, to make it appeal to a little bit different customer than, than when the camera first came out. Um, a little bit more um, kind of personal attachment feel um, and a product that still takes great images. So how much of the, the DNA of a flagship product like the 645Z, I mean, how much of the, of the research and development DNA goes down the line into the APS-C and into the Q? Um, it, it, it's interesting because it goes both ways. It goes up and down because um, the, the focusing system and the metering system we have in the 645Z, that actually came from the development of the K3. Um, different exposure modes like shutter or uh, sensitivity priority, the shutter and aperture priority, um, that kind of percolated up from from a, a APS-C DSLR that we've, we introduced years ago. Um, but at the same time, the, the processing, you know, how we process a medium format image quickly and efficiently, that kind of trickles down into the lower cameras. Um, another example of that is the K3, the AA filter simulator technology. Uh, which is totally unique and a very interesting technology we, um, that percolated down to the KS1. So you'll con continue to see that kind of um, sharing of, of technology both up the line and down the line. How important, I mean, you and I have spoken at several points over the past couple of years. I mean, how important is video for your customers now? Because I know when I spoke to you a couple of years ago, it, it sort of wasn't, wasn't really crucial for a lot of your customers, but I mean, is it getting more important? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I would say so. Um, I, I think you know, there's there's things we can do with you know 4K video and and that sort of thing, um, but I think it's become an important part of any um, digital imaging device, both the video and the still capture. Um, however, I do know that the the you know the core kind of who we are uh, with Pentax and and with Rico Imaging, um, there's that you know that feeling that we are a still 
image company. Um, but, you know, we definitely want to maximize the video capabilities of all of our cameras to the point where, you know, introducing a camera like the WGM-1, our, our kind of action camera that is more of a, a video camera than a still camera, but of that category takes the best still images because of the sensor it uses. If you're talking to someone who's got, say, $2,000 in their pocket, they want to buy a high-end DSLR, mm -hmm. why, how would you persuade them to go with a, with a Pentax over anything else? Uh, it's a it's a whole host of things. Um, try to wrap it up quickly. Um, the K3 has, you know, one of the greatest sensors in that class of cameras. Great great image quality, but that with that you get the AA fil filter simulator technology. Where with other manufacturers, it's a choice of with a AA filter without. Um, its frame rate um, at that 8.3 frames per second, fastest camera in this class, has the highest ISO settings in the class. Um, you know, the widest shutter speed range, waterproof body, magnesium alloy covers, all those things. But then the, the, the lens side of it is, as well. So we've got the, you know, 30 some odd, 32 different lenses we have available um, currently. But then that ability to use older lenses, whether it's, uh, you know, a classic 50 millimeter or whatever it is, you can use that and still access all the features and functions of the camera, or most of them, depending on the lens, uh, with a camera like the K3. Great. Well, thank you, John. I think that's all we've got time for, but it's always a pleasure to speak to you, and thank you for your, for your time today. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much.